want to touch all the rocks. <laughs> so I present the touch rocks. <laughs> these are examples of formations you can see inside. You can touch these all you want. The ones inside can't touch. So come on over. This white mineral is called calcite. It's made out of crushed coral and seashells. It makes almost everything inside the cave. I'll go. Yeah, no. You see more of that in the other cave than you do in this one. The smith stuff is known as flowstone. That's how you get stalactites and stalagmites. So once you see the touch rocks, we're going to go on down to the closed doors. So what is it uh, this is a much bigger with a lot more formations. Oh. Very different looking. What do you call this rock? This is calcite. Okay. Another name for that is calcium carbonate. Oh. But this is not the granite, right? Uh, no, it's not granite. Okay. Um, but it does make up limestone. Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. So, as you can see, this first tunnel is man made. We made this one because originally the only way into this cave is through a very long and tight squeezing process. We don't like making guys go through that kind of stuff, so we made this tunnel. You're welcome. <laughs> so the next tunnel is also man-made, and we made that one in order to protect the cave. You see, we kind of put this big gaping hole in the side of the mountain. So the next tunnel is called an airlock system. And all it means is we cannot have both sets of doors open at the same time. Otherwise, it creates a wind tunnel and can dry out the cave. Mm. So we're going to go on down to the next set of closed doors. Sure. Okay. It's going to be cold. Yes. So, what we have to. Ooh, it's wet. Wow. Slow down, Ariel. No flash. No flash. No, it's okay. Wow. How did you know? I didn't put any flat. Okay. The thing I hear about this tunnel is it smells like my grandma's basement. <laughs> now these are the constant conditions of the cave. 52 degrees year round and quite damp. Now here is the bad news. We have 120 stair steps to go down. Which means we have 120 steps to come back up. Sorry, no elevators, no escalators, just your shovel legs or your shibaroos. <laughs> or maybe your lamborghinis. <laughs> and if you get stuck, you can always rely on your tow trucks. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now you know what kind of humor you're in for. We have to apologize in advance. <laughs> and you're giggling, that's a good sign. <laughs> Talk a little bit at the top. So we're gonna go as far to the right as you can go. All right? Okay. Are we ready to see a cave? Yeah! yeah. All right, woo! And Ooh. for those who have been in the fairy cave, are you ready to see a very different looking cave? And they didn't answer. Okay, come on. We haven't been. Well, heck, there's three people on this tour. Ah. Wow. Beautiful. Ooh, a little bit cooler. Wow. Good job. Oh, look over here. Oh, tabi tabi kayo jan. Dali. Dito dito kayo jan. Oh. One. 
One, two, three. Ito, natatakpang ka ito. Oh, one, two, three. Okay. Pardon me. And welcome Yay. to the barn. Why a barn, you ask? Good question. So back in 1960, a man named Pete Treble was exploring the fairy caves above when he came across a passage that was too narrow to go through. So he came back later with a stick of dynamite. And he blew up a passage in a privately owned cave. The narrowest point remains at eight and a half inches. We're talking about the width of a sheet of paper. We call this point jam crash because you literally have to jam yourself into a crack. And the first choice you would have to make is what shoulder to look over because your nose sticks out too far. And you would turn your feet sideways and you would suck in your gut. And you would take shallow breaths in order to let your lungs collapse. Just a little bit. And a method called compression breathing. Usually safe for emergencies. The problem is, it doesn't get much wider. So you would have to continue to cave like this for approximately the next 45 minutes. Mm. <laughs> Vertically. That's the part that would get me. Nothing like being scared of heights while underground. But he climbed down with a couple of his friends. Then he climbed up through a little hole I'll get to show you later on. And he looked around with a carbine light on the top of his helmet. And he said, oh my god, this is big as a barn. And that is how this portion of the cave got its name. That's so cool. in a moment, we're going to head over to that corner to take a look at some formations. But first, who wants to see a fairy? She is. Oh, wow. She's on her toes, put legs together, a little flippy to Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see that one. I'm trying to know my life. Oh, okay. 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 We're going to head over to that corner over there to take a look at some formations. Wow. Right in the middle of my life. <laughs> Looks like a fairy. Water, things like rain, melting snow, <clears throat> seeps through the ground, grabs carbon dioxide from the plant life, which turns the water into a very weak acid called carbonic acid. Sounds tasty, doesn't it? No? You don't like soda? Because what I'm talking about is nothing more than a weak soda bar. In fact, the soda people drink is stronger than the stuff that comes in and helps form this cave. So once the water turns into this carbonic acid, it grabs some of the white mineral calcite from the rocks it's passing through. But the moment it touches the air in here, it loses the carbon dioxide like a soda going flat, turns back into regular water, and leaves the calcite behind. Depending on how it leaves it behind is to what kind of formations we get. For example, if the calcite drips in and forms strips, they are known as ribbons. As ribbons get wider, they become more commonly known as cave bacon. <laughs> Especially in our caves, because of the iron, we get the meaty looking stripes. Most caves, you're going to get the cheap, fatty stuff. You know, Walmart bacon. <laughs> now, if instead the calcite drips down and forms these thin hollow tubes, they are known as soda straws. They are hollow because they form around the drop of water. If the soda straw gets clogged and becomes thick on the bottom but still thin on the top, then it is known as a cave carrot. Don't worry, these are vegetables you don't have to eat. And if cave carrot gets thick on the top as well, it becomes a stalactite. And if the calcite drips down and builds up, it forms a stalagmite. So here in a moment, we're going to go down to the first platform to take a closer look. If there is anyone who feels they cannot handle the 120 steps for any reason, we have something up here we'll let you touch. It is known as 
A bench. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Otherwise, please hold on to the rails. These steps are slippery. Oh, Magandang steps na narito kumpara doon sa ano sa Sequoia. Look at those. What? Just be careful of this rock over here. It likes to grab people by the face. Otherwise, we're filling in this platform as much as we can. Be very careful when you straighten back up, my dear. Yeah, yeah, set, set a little one. Two, two, two. Fiona, this is the side of the room. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do something about that oppressive darkness behind you guys. I know it tends to make people nervous. Okay. 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 Okay.
Really? Your body's adjusting to the 52 degrees. 52. And it won't uh, go down to that temperature? Uh, no, we would have to go like closer to the center of the earth for the temperature to start to change. Oh, okay. Of course, at that point, I'd be heating up. Oh, heating up, okay. <laughs> oh, look at that. The average temperature of a cave or the temperature of a cave is going to be the average temperature of the outside area for the whole year. Hmm. So they'll tell you, you know, basically, like say here, it's about 52. That doesn't mean that there's not going to be a year where it's 53 or 54 or even closer to 50. But on average, they say it's pretty close to 52. Now, this tour gets its name from the room at the bottom of the stairs. When we first looked in there, we thought the formations looked like chess pieces, thus the name King's Row. It is considered the most decorated cave room in the state of Colorado. And originally, the opening was another hole you had to wiggle through. And once again, we don't like making you guys go through that kind of stuff, so we made it bigger so we can walk in. And since we did that, we quoted gold on it in order to protect it from getting dried out quicker because of us. And in this case, it's a garage door. <laughs> that never gets old. Pardon me, my ears. Now, before we actually go in there, we're going to pause on this platform down here, and you'll look over the ledge, and you will look down, and you will see a dark hole. Hmm. And what that dark hole is, is where they first came into the cave when it was discovered. So, quick recap. Pete Preble started in the fairy caves above. After about two hours total of intense caving, squeezing through that eight and a half inch opening about halfway through, coming down beneath us and having to climb up. He came up and he looked around and he's like, oh my God, where did these stairs come from? <laughs> Thank you for remembering your sympathy laughter. <laughs> now that is where he actually came in at. And it's the one down at the bottom because there's a second hole kind of to the side. That one's lit up for the cave bacon. So we'll go down, take a look at that, and then we'll go into the King's Row room. Are you ready? Yes. All right. As always, please hold on to rest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And that was the sound of the end of your freedom. Yeah. <laughs> well, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing I get to do is show you what a cave really looks like by turning out the lights. So if everyone can dim their phones and cameras for just a moment, please and thank you. Okay, okay. okay. Is, no external light source. If you are scared of the dark, now is a good time to close your eyes or hold somebody's hand. Isn't it beautiful? Wow. 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 Down there. Something gorgeous, don't you think? No. Wait. Oh, I can never look better, Evan. <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you King's Row. Ooh. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. So cool. Wow, beautiful. Wow, that's cool. So we get a lot of our formations in here. We have our stalactites that hold tight to the ceiling. Our stalagmites that you might trip over. And a column is where they meet. And yes, that is what we really do, column. Wow. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and then we have our uh, cave bacon. And when cave bacon gets really wide, it's known as a drapery. Because who wouldn't want bacon for curtains? <laughs> thank you. Although that one's not a kiki original. Yeah. It's still accepting giggles. <laughs> So this is a great room for imagination. For example, next to the column, we have a statue of Snow White with a bird on her head. We know it's Snow White because of all the dwarfs. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm oh, cute. So if you look to the left of the column, kind of a little bit in the back. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then we have a castle in the background, kind of in the middle. Could be Snow White. It doesn't necessarily have to be. And then to the right, pardon me for a quick second, huh? There's this big one that a lot of people say looks like somebody holding a baby. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is, is, nobody can agree on who's holding the baby. I've heard monkeys holding a baby, Buddha holding a baby, mm. Jabba the Hutt holding Jabba a Hutt. Uh -huh. baby. Mm. Looks like holding an ice cream. <laughs> Could be. Now, we learned something really cool about our caves, but for me to show you, I will have to turn out the lights again, although this time, keep your phones and cameras ready. And one, two, three, ta-da! Okay, wow. 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 So the purple is the calcite, the lime green to white is impurities in the calcite, and when it glows like this, it's called fluorescence. And here in a moment, I get to show you something called phosphorescence. And what that is, is when I turn out the lights again, some spots will continue to glow for a couple of seconds. Mm. Now, it doesn't last long. It can be easily missed, and a camera flash will ruin the effect. So I'm going to wait, make sure everyone has a chance to get some pictures first. When you're ready, just kind of hold your phone to your chest, because even the glow from the screen can make it difficult for you to see. Okay. When I see mostly darkness, so I'll know we're ready to continue. Mm -hmm. And I think we could be ready. So on the count of three. And ready. One, two, three. No. Oh, no. Oh, it doesn't last long. So we'll do it again in case if you missed it. This time, if you close your eyes and then open them when I say three, it tends to pop out better, usually. So go ahead and close your eyes. Are your eyes closed? Yeah. Yep. All right. And ready. One, two, three. Open. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So we've got more time just because we can. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and close your eyes. And ready? One, two, three. Wow, it's wow. a fluorescent. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, on my first tour, I made a small mistake. And I started turning on regular lights with the black lights still on, but I got a good reaction. So now I do it on purpose. It is neat. Mm. Got more of a pink oh. and lavender theme mm. going on. Ah. Yeah. See, James could be yeah. girly too. <laughs> For those who are curious, on this bottom row here, you are 150 feet underground. And beyond this room, this cave goes on for another mile. Wow. It's a few different That's paths, but a mile total. Wow. So here is the plan. In a moment, I'm going to open up the door, let you regain your freedom. If you are completely done taking pictures, we're going to have the front row 
lead the way back up to the platform with the emergency box, that big gray box with the red cross. There's also a little sign on that platform that says, wait here. Please wait there. <laughs> you have to understand. Uh, one day I had about 33 people on my tour. I am required to be the last person out so I can turn off the lights. When I got out, I had seven people left. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, guys, there's still like a quarter left of the tour. <laughs> Okay. Now, anyone who wants to come down for a closer look, maybe a quick picture without my heads in the way, you're more than welcome to. I know how much people love their cave selfies. <laughs> Keep in mind, pictures with people usually need the flash on, not auto. Otherwise, you tend to get lovely shadows in front of a lovely background. So here comes the glory. Okay, you guys, look up in here. Get Jack. You guys are ready. Get Jack. Okay, get Jack. Ready? One. Okay, go. Okay, go. One, two, three. Smile. So guess what? We just got to the hardest part, coming back up. Yay, us. Yeah. Would you mind hitting the black button in the middle? discovering the barn. Mm -hmm. So he wrote to Pete and asked permission to come see the caves. He got no response. So he tried again. This time his letter was returned to sender unopened. Okay, so for those of you who do not understand what the post office is, mm -hmm. I feel like you a text or email sent back to you unread. <laughs> Unthinkable, right? <laughs> and about another generation, that will be no longer a joke. <laughs> Even though he continued with college in his career, he continued to write year after year. Then finally, in 1992, 10 years later, he got a response. All right, fine, you can come see the caves. Just stop writing to me, all right? <laughs> now, I can't really do the tours anymore, so my phone will do it. And it is safer to have three people when you go caving, so go ahead and bring somebody. So Steve, date. It was their second date. <laughs> and after the two hours of intense caving, squeezing to the eight and a half and feel me, knowing they had to do it all over again in reverse to get out, which takes longer because you no longer have the gravity helping you. They looked around the cave and they fell in love with it. They must have fallen in love with each other because they're happily married with two sons. Over the next few years, he got to know them, and then he finally gave Steve and Jeannie a chance to lease some of the land with an option to buy, so that's exactly what they did. And it was Memorial Day of 1999 when Steve opened up the caves for tours, and it was 2002 when he officially started to buy it. So from the time he started to learn about it to the time he started to buy it, 
It took Steve 20 years to get a hold of this cave system. Mm -hmm. It's a great lesson in perseverance and never giving up on your dreams. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> now, our next actual stop is going to be the platform with a big pile of dirt. Now, there's these two little platforms between here and there, so you can pause, take a breath, take a picture. <laughs> in fact, this next platform has its own history. It's known as the wedding platform. Mm. A couple of volunteers that helped at Flanwood Caverns open for tours got married right there in mm. this cave. And they chose that spot because of these two stalactites. They mm. felt like oh. they were growing together, oh, yeah. representing a love that would last forever. Mm. And they, too, are happily married. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of a joke that runs around the cave, though. And that is, if that's the married couple, then that's an awful lot of kids. <laughs> Which must have scared them, because they never had any kids. <laughs> so we're going to start heading on up to the platform, the big pile of dirt. Is everyone breathing okay, doing yeah. all right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, just, I'd just like to check on my people before we move on any further. This uh, jacket, you know, cell phone, you know, light, uh, light. grabber right over here. Yeah. Did you just tell the rock to grab you? Yeah. Okay, just making sure I heard you correctly. <laughs> yeah, usually you don't want rocks to grab you because it tends to hurt. Mm -hmm. So a common question we get is where does all this dirt come from? The simplified answer is up there. It's a 65 foot hole, which is the equivalent of six and a half stories. And for the longest time, we had no idea just how high it felt went. You see, when we took over back in the late 90s, it was just before laser measuring devices. And the walls are too soft for anyone to climb up safely. So whenever anybody asks, well, how high up does that go? Our answer was usually along the lines of, we have no idea. <laughs> then one day, there was a microbiologist on one of our tours. And when the question was asked and our no clue answer was given, she then suggested, well, why not send up a helium balloon with a really long string attached? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Got the balloon to the top, mark the string, measure the mark on the string to the tip of the balloon. It was such a simple solution, we felt really, really stupid. <laughs> it was one of those. <laughs> but it worked. And we got approximately 65 feet, which was later wow. verified when technology advanced a little more. And no, we have not sent up a drone. <laughs> that has become a very common question, so I just try to cut off that question before it happens. Now, our next stop is back up on the Cheeto platform, where I will get to show you the heart of the cave. And I don't mean a Valentine heart, but a heart with veins and guts, and I can even make it beat. Mm. And I have had a heart surgeon verify it is more or less what a human heart actually looks like. So, are we ready to go see that? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, so even the way now. Like I said, it's not a Valentine heart, 
for heart with veins and guts. Would you like to see it beat? Yeah. Yes. Okay, ready? <laughs> now, with all the corny cave jokes, you should have seen this one coming. So, once you see this, catch your breath, take a picture. You're more than welcome to head up to the top. So I didn't take a picture yet. <laughs> Of this type of formation. Well, you got a little bit of flowstone, and then it's mixed with some ribbons. And that's what makes it look like it has a lot of veins. It's, it's growing a lot of what will eventually be caved bacon. Mm -hmm. Wow. Water just dropped on me. Mm -hmm. That's considered good luck. That, you guys got kissed by the fairy. There you go. Or if that's too girly for you, you can say you got kissed by the cave. <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, just up to the top. Okay. 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 I'm trying to wash my hair. Hmm. I'm trying to wash my hair. Uh, that is only the water with minerals. Ah, okay. oh, that means minerals are going to go. Yeah, look at that. Bed. Looks like bacon. Now is the time, and then I can start slowly closing towards the door. Uh, look over here. Dumo na lang kunin ba ibigay? Yeah. Madilim baka mamaya may bigay mo yung isang libo. Yeah. 